Welcome to O-State Daily. Boy, there was a fun evening last night. I, I got into Stillwater, oh, about three, about four o'clock, something like that. And boy, you could just feel the buzz. And you had a team in K-State that was a heavy favorite coming into Boone Pickens Stadium. As Coach Gundy said in his post-game show, you know, whenever you have all the fireworks going off and you have a big crowd and it's an evening game like that, it almost had that bedlam-type game feel to it last night. Lots of electricity. So, hey, you know, I know whenever we had the home game against South Alabama, you had the good home crowd. And Coach Gundy was disappointed in the fact that he had the good crowd. People were excited, and the team did nothing, absolutely nothing to keep them engaged. He promised not to have that happen again. And all lo and behold, they come out the first drive. They have a reverse. They have a double reverse. We're going to get into all that. We're going to break it down in detail basically play by play going to break down the x and o's of how the plays happen why they happen but hey the you know the crowd was excited coach gundy wanted to make sure that he kept the crowd inside excited got a good three and out and then came out just firing on offense so it was a fantastic evening at boone picking stadium over fifty three thousand people showed up on a Friday evening. Not a huge fan of Friday night games. You know, I like Friday night lights for the high school, but hey, it is what it is. And that's, you know, that's that's when we were asked to show up. So that's what we did. So Oklahoma State took it to K-State. They sprung the upset 29 to 21. It was an exciting game. Probably shouldn't have been as close as the eight points indicated. OSU, it seemed like, dominated the game a little bit more than that, if you look on the rushing yards, Alan Bowman, first of all, passing. Alan Bowman was 19 for 35. I mentioned in the in the in in our podcast this last week, I wanted him, or I felt like one of the keys was he needed to be 60% completion rate. He was close to that, 235 yards, and he had zero interceptions on the night. That was the big one. He checked down and threw the ball away when he needed to on the night. Ollie Gordon rushing. He was an absolute man. 21 carries, 136 yards. And then Alan Bowman also carried the ball five times as well. Jaden Nixon looked very explosive receiving-wise. Check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different receivers caught passes, including Jaden Bray, who had four. And then Rashad Owens, who had five. Rashad Owens had a great night last night. Brendan Presley had four. And Josiah Johnson, who came out smoking hot last night, early on and then Nick Martin had the 17 tackles and Cameron Epps had the two interceptions so it was a good night overall hey let's not get to it let's get to the film breakdown let's break this down it's going to be X's and O's galore it's going to show you exactly what happened and why things happened so let's not waste any more time and let's get right to Oklahoma State football so the crowd is juiced, and Odin K-State gets the ball first. Oklahoma State on defense. First of all, look how great of a play this is by the nose guard. Another thing I want you to notice right here, defensive end in this odd stack, he actually chases down the the inside handoff, which is a good and a bad thing, okay, because I'm going to show you here in just a second. Watch from a defensive end spot. He actually chases that inside zone. He actually gets cut down, and as the nose guard makes a great play, Walter Scheid, what great effort get back up and then it ends up actually making the play that's great effort and that's you know hey that's a team right there defensively that is fired up ready to play now k-state interesting here they had the trips receivers to the field side then they also had the h back to that same field side four receivers four vertical threats to one side of the field so why do they do that i want to show you right here that's because they want to isolate this corner this is what i call a cloud corner cloud meaning now this corner has run support to this alley instead of it being the safety okay so watch this okay as they hand the ball off look at will howard's eyes it's on the corner right here and k-state is setting this up they're going to set up the next play and the reason why i say that is this is a really quick handoff if he just rides that handoff a little bit longer and lets number eight get to the numbers then that corner is going to have to widen out with that run look and then this safety right here is going to have to rally on that that's going to put Will Howard one-on-one -on -one with a safety that is about 10 yards deep. And that should be advantage K-State because Will Howard is a very good running quarterback. But you see, he hands it off really fast. That allows the cloud corner here to play both quarterback and number eight. And it allows him to rally to the ball. And Will Howard has no give option. Okay, so why is that a big deal? K-State, obviously, they have this mapped out. Because as we watch this second play come up for them. Okay, same play right here. Same concept, I should say. You have inside zone to the left. Number three is going to run 
run off the outside linebacker to this side. The receiver right here is going to run off the corner. So you're getting the exact same concept. Will Howard is going to read this one last guy right here, the only last box player that has run support. This guy is going to run off the corner. So this time, instead of handing it off real fast, he's going to allow number three the time to clear out this line outside linebacker to the numbers. So watch this. Okay, so he doesn't ride the handoff, but he does pull it, and then he acts like he's going to throw it. Now, as he's acting like he's going to throw it, he's never wanting to throw this ball. All he's allowing to happen is for this receiver to clear out that outside linebacker far enough to open up this gap. What that does, see Colt Walter shot, I mentioned he chased that inside zone. What that does is that allows that lane for that quarterback to run. What K-State did not realize at this time, Oklahoma State had a spy on, on Will Howard, and they had one playing 10 yards deep. It was a beautiful design by Gary Nardo. Now, you would think a safety 10 yards deep versus the Will Howard – one-on-one, -on -one, that would be advantage K-State, but watch how the safety rallies on this play. Right here, boom, comes up. Now, another thing about this that is just absolutely textbook, as this safety comes up right here to fit this play, this safety has to fit the outside shoulder right there. Okay, so look at the leverage. You have linebacker coming from inside. You have Cole Walterside coming from the inside. You have another defensive lineman coming from the inside. If this safety fits the outside shoulder, Will Howard is going to have to cut it back in, and when he does, he's cutting it right back into this linebacker and these two defensive linemen, and he has nowhere to go. So not only conceptually did Oklahoma State run this absolutely perfectly, they executed it to a T. They knew their leverage points, and they stuck to them. Will Howard had nowhere to go other than to fall down. So great play defensively for Oklahoma State. And now that sets up a third and nine. OSU now has just a brilliant, I mean a brilliant call here. They send what I call five and a half. They had the four defensive linemen. Then they're also going to fire a linebacker. Okay, now they're going to fire the one linebacker. Then they're going to twist this guy right here. Now, why is that such a big deal? Because as this linebacker fires, that puts instant pressure on Will Howard. You see, this is going to be linebacker against running back, and that makes all quarterbacks a little bit nervous okay and the beauty in this is this twist right here let me back that up just a touch by the second linebacker is not only you know providing at least a little bit of pressure on will howard guess what it also is it's a spy and what osu did with their spies with will howard instead of getting them right up you know maybe three or four yards away from him where he could make a guy miss they kept their depth we saw the safety on last play this time it's a linebacker so right out right here now as this linebacker is twisting into this open gap. First of all, it's making Will Howard look like he has this lane to run to, but because of the twist, that's actually getting shut down, something he doesn't realize. He does not have a you know the ability, once he sees this spy, he doesn't have the ability to run, which I'm sure is something he'd like to do. And then Oklahoma State, they're in man-to-man -man coverage on this crossing route, and anytime your corner can run with the receiver and man-to-man -man on the crossing routes like that, that tells you that you're second Secondary members are as athletic or more athletic than the K-State receivers. And at that point, you know it's going to be a pretty good night. So after a good defensive series, OSU gets the ball back. They stay very, very aggressive. Hey, OSU fans, get excited. The air raid is back. Now, let me explain to you what I mean here. OSU runs the scat concept. That's a concept that Dana Holgerson brought with him in 2010 to Stillwater. With the air raid, it is the absolute number one staple of the air raid offense. Let me show you exactly what happens. Usually in a scat concept, what's trying to take place is you, this inside guy, he usually runs a bubble. That that gets this inside safety to chase that bubble. Once he does, you run a replacement route right to replace where that safety vacated from, especially if these defenses like, like K-State, they play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. So if this guy follows Presley out to the outside, you're going to see Josiah Johnson just run a replacement route. You throw it, he just kind of posts up, a big old tall dude in the middle of the field, posts up like he's getting a rebound, and you know you throw it and you get five or six yards, almost like an extension of your running game. So let's 
watch this. Instead of it being a bubble, it's actually a speed cut by Presley. You're going to get the go route right here against man coverage, which is going to get rid of that first safety here. So you see that first actually he squats. He does a very good job on that in Oklahoma State. I'm sure sees that. He's passed down to the corner. That is an advantage, which is why Oklahoma State tried to attack deep down the field later on. So right here you're going to get you're going to get the the speed cut which is supposed to take the the safeties away from that. You're going to get the replacement route here from Josiah Johnson and you're going to get an easy completion see Josiah Johnson right here replaces. He just turns around post up like he's getting a rebound in basketball. He's, you know, makes himself presentable to the quarterback. He's showing both numbers to Alan Bowman. A very easy pass, an easy catch. Josiah Johnson catches it. Get up field, you get four or five, six yards, and it's like an extension to your run game. And another thing it does, it gets your quarterback going. It's an easy throw for him early on in the game, and you get your, your offense going. So now you have the good first down play. It's second down and four. Ollie Gordon is dotting the pistol here. That is Brennan Presley in motion. Orbits back behind Alan Bowman, and then you use that orbit motion to draw the safeties. Now watch as as Presley comes across. What what Casey Dunn is looking at right here as Presley comes across. What Casey Dunn's doing is actually reading this secondary with that motion. If this corner follows Brennan Presley, he knows they're going to be in man to man coverage. If that corner passes him off, he knows it's going to be some kind of zone coverage. Alan Bowman is reading that as well. That's going to determine whether he actually hands the ball off or passes the ball. So you can see Bowman right now. Look, look at Bowman. Look who he's looking at. He's looking at this safety right here to determine whether he is in man or whether he is in zone coverage. And you you can see he is following Brendan Presley, so you can tell that is a man-to-man coverage situation. This safety right here is trying to tell him, hey, we're actually in zone. They're absolutely messed up at this point. Alan Bowman, if he reads this properly, he just sends Josiah Johnson out to the flats, and that would have been an easy completion. But instead, he hands the ball off as Presley comes back out. If Presley would have continued going and they would have slipped they would have slipped the H back out here. That would have been a much better play than they ran. But they hand the ball off to Ollie Gordon. So now you got, you know, actually they didn't hand the ball off to Ollie Gordon. They ran what I call hammer pass. It's that H back. And let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. They back this up just a touch. Okay, I call this hammer because hammer for the H, that split zone play that we see a lot where you run zone this way. H back pulls across, quarterback keeps it. You get back underneath that H that kicks out. So watch this H back come across the formation here. Like it, you're going to get zone left. H back pull back across. You're going to get just kind of a blast look up the middle here, just kind of a base look up the middle. And then you're going to get H back right here, who typically speaking would kick this guy. That defensive end goes up inside and then. And, and, and Johnson just free releases him, makes him think, hey, I've got a tackle right here on Gordon. Instead, he releases for that pass on that split zone pass. A good block, a good crack block by the receiver. On this play right here, uh, that would be Rashad Owens. That's a very good crack block. And a good thing about that, hey, one of the rules this year is that for this crack block to be legal, you actually have to use your hands if you use any kind of your shoulders. And you actually have to hit them whenever you can see both of their numbers. If you hit the side of them or if you use your shoulders at all to block, then that is an illegal block. And look at Rashad Owens. Look how picture perfect this block is by him. Okay, number 10 right here. Watch how he waits until the K-State player is squared up right there, and then he uses both hands to actually hit him in the front. That gets the ball again to Josiah Johnson for an easy first down. This is just absolutely great offensive football. You, you know, you're using decoys. You're using your best players. Now you're going to give the, the look of fast flow. You know, three flows. You have full flow up the middle. Fast flow goes sideways. Then you have counter flow when you make it look like it's going one way, come back the other. So the way that you read that as a, as a linebacker is if you lose the numbers. So in other words, Ollie Gordon's numbers are pointing to the sideline. That is fast flow. As soon as you get fast flow, you chase that fast flow. If you see Ollie Gordon's number, that is full flow. You fit that up the middle. So right now, Ollie Gordon is giving Kansas State a fast flow look, and then he reverses it to Brennan Presley, and here comes Brennan Presley on the reverse. This was a very good play call, even better defense by K-State. As you see, all the linebackers chased the fast flow to this side. Right now, this is set up very, very, very well. 
if Alan Bowman, of course, the quarterback, he got a little bit too far inside. If he could have just sealed off this guy right here, this might have been an even bigger play because he was able to slow that play, uh, slow play that enough to slow Presley down. Then you get the reverse pass, the double reverse here. There, That goes back to Alan Bowman. You know, I like the aggressiveness. I like the fact that it's to, to Josiah Johnson. Probably option number, you know, five or six on the field that you wouldn't expect K-State to be keying in on. The one thing I don't like about this play is that it is too close to the reverse. K-State had the reverse on their mind early on, and so they were able to adjust to it. I think if you had waited maybe a series or two to get back to that reverse pass, the K-State might have fallen asleep again, and it might have worked a little bit better from that perspective. But, hey, OSU is aggressive. It's setting the tone. We're going to have an aggressive offensive night. Now, this is just a great play. Third and two, you see right here. Okay, this is called power blast. And what I mean by that is, okay, power is whenever you pull a guard. Typically speaking, you wrap him, but, you know, he can keep, he can keep and kick too. So, right here, you're going to see right guard. You're going to see him pull then you're going to see h back and then the blast part of it is you're going to see ollie gordon block right here so that's the blast here is the power so power from the the guard pulling blast from the running back leading up and then quarterback just keeping and then the, the beauty of this if you back this up just a touch watch out the offensive line they actually block zone to the right okay then you pull back to, to the left. That's the counterflow part of it. So you're going to give zone to the right to get everybody to step down this way, just that one false step. Watch the defense. See how they false step back to their left? The offense is right. That gives the H-back Josiah Johnson the angle he needs to seal the edge. It's called setting the edge right here. And then that is hopefully, if Johnson can set this edge, that gets Ollie Gordon up on this safety. Now you really have a play going. And so that just that little, and see how Josiah, uh, Josiah was able to set the edge right there. The reason why he is able to set that edge so well is because you ran zone look to the right. That got K-State to take that one false step to their left. That allowed Johnson to set that edge and Alan Bowman to get to that edge and get the first down. A very, very well drawn up play. A, an even better executed play osu is just rocking on offense now you're going to run a zone look to the left right here so here you go you got k-state not anticipating bowman whatsoever look at this guy's eyes all of these eyes right here are on ollie gordon you have one linebacker to the backside that stays home that blows up the play here otherwise this is going to be absolutely huge there's no reason for this linebacker to expect bowman this early in the game to pull the ball this is just a great play very disciplined by this linebacker because if he doesn't make this play Alan Bowman is running well you still don't see a safety in in the picture he probably gets of course he makes a great play to get nine yards there but he probably has a bigger gain than that now Ollie Gordon we're going to see we've seen him already in the run game we've seen him be a decoy now we're going to see him go out and be a decoy in the pass game so we've seen him be a decoy in the run game. We've seen him block. We've seen him pass block. Now we've seen him be a decoy in the pass game. Now we're going to see him actually get involved in the pass game. So all the different ways in which Casey Dunn is using Ollie Gordon right now is just simply fantastic. So as you look at this play, that's just 300 pass pro. Face, whatever you want to call it. So you're going to see Josiah run off his inside receiver here. The linebacker right here gets a... A late jump on, look at, he's trying to figure out, you know, exactly who has what. So right here, what happens is you give the face look and you're going to run off this safety right here. This safety has to stay home for just a second to cover this vertical threat. This linebacker then, that's a tough cover for him. No way he's going to get out there in time to cover Ollie Gordon to keep him in front of the sticks. This safety right here, it's a cover two look. He actually squats and, you know, hey, that's 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 a pretty good defense to have against that play because in a cover two, instead of like a cover four or a man-to-man -man where that safety would just take off with the receiver, in a cover two, that corner squats. But still, even that the, though that K-State had the perfect defensive call on with the cover two where that, safe, where that corner squats, it still was such a well-designed offensive play. No way you're going to stop that for less than three yards. Ollie Gordon, yet another way OSU has used him, gets the first down. Now, Alan Bowman, just an easy pass. Okay, so after you've run all this eye candy and you've done all this decoy with Ollie Gordon, you've ran these passes, you've ran these runs, you've done all this, 
Now you can do all this eye candy. Now look at Ollie Gordon going out for a pass over here. Look at this linebacker right here. Look at all the safeties chasing all of this just eye candy down here at the bottom. What does that do? That leaves the receivers at the top in one-on-one -on -one matchups. Just as easy as can be, the inside receiver runs off his safety. Watch the inside receiver right here. Just runs that quick slant, gets rid of that safety, drives him to the middle of the field. That puts your outside receiver one-on-one -on -one coverage. Again, just like Josiah Johnson, he posts up. He shows both numbers to Alan Bowman, which makes it a very easy throw at is Bowman a lot of margin for error, which this wasn't a great pass, but because the receiver posted up, he was able to catch it, get back to the sideline, break it, almost break a tackle, and get the first down. So another easy throw designed for Alan Bowman by Casey Dunn, and it's off of all the eye candy you've given K-State so far. Now, you're going to give the look to to uh, Ollie Gordon again. You're going to use him as a decoy, try to hit one of your best players, and Brennan Presley on a slant play, then you're going to give the ball to Ollie Gordon. You see, okay, let me back that up. When OSU just lines up and hands the ball off on a zone play, this is my biggest gripe with them is that they just don't get yardage. I mean, because K-State just runs right to the ball. You have to do the creative things we've already talked about for this offense to have a chance. So now Ollie Gordon, we've seen him run the ball. We've seen him be a run decoy. We've seen him catch the ball. We've seen him be a decoy in the pass game. Now we're going to see him actually block and be a good blocker, and that's going to get the ball to the outside and give Bowman the time he needs to get this pass off. So just right here, you know, K-State in man-to-man coverage. Third and 11, you would anticipate that, so you're just going to run and out. Hey, make sure and get past the sticks. So when you complete that, you get the first down. Didn't quite get past the sticks, but got close enough to all you had to do was fall forward. That is a great route by Brendan Presley. Knew exactly what he had to do to get the first down. Now you're going to give the fast flow look from Presley. Now you're going to give the full flow look. So you're giving K-State two different looks. You're giving the, the box players the full flow look from Ollie Gordon. You're giving the secondary the, the, excuse me, you're giving the box players the full flow look from Ollie Gordon. You're giving the secondary players the fast flow look from Presley. So what's that going to do? That's going to force the linebackers to fit up on that run. It's going to force the safeties to drive on that fast flow. Once they do that, look at this gap in the field right here that Rashad Owens has to run this, this zone slant play and the thing that Rashad Owens did see how he's still driving his defender down the field still driving and then he drives his defender almost to the well basically to the three yard line before he just turns around and post up that you know hey I know that's considered a slant but this is a great route how he you know if he just slants right here he's probably going to run into the defense and it's not going to be a great play but watch how he drives and then instead of you know just slanting actually he just kind of turns around and posts up watch this drive the, and they just turn around now look both of his numbers are pointed to the football. Bowman gets the ball out. Easy catch for Owens, and he gets down to the two-yard line. Now, we've talked about all the ways OSU has used Ollie Gordon to this point. Okay, I don't like this play on first down. Just run the ball. Try to get in the end zone. OSU does not have a high-point receiver right now. Okay, of all the ways they've used Ollie Gordon, now look how they use him. The Punisher. Get in the end zone, young man. Yes, sir. Finish off the drive, Ollie Gordon. You deserve that one. That was a very creative drive. Hey, and this just goes to show when K Casey Dunn draws it upright when he is creative and he draws up good scheme. Look at that left guard pull. When he draws up good scheme, OSU has a good offense. Okay, so after an interception where OSU had to punt, then a K-State punt, OSU got the ball back. This is the first field goal drive for Oklahoma State on the evening. This is a great play to Rashad Owens right here. What I want you to notice, watch Brendan Presley. He's the one who actually made the play. And also Ollie Gordon. I want to back this up just a little bit. Okay, this is called a mesh concept. Hey, Oklahoma State fans, we've been clamoring for the air raid to come back. It, it was back in full force last night. Another air raid concept. The big one that Holgerson brought to Oklahoma State. A lot of teams run this. We saw the SCAD concept earlier. This is known as the mesh concept. A mesh concept against man coverage. You have two shallow crossers. Here's Rashad Owens. Here's Brennan Presley. You're going to have them both cross. They're called shallow crosses. And then, you know, you beat man coverage. You get the, the safeties and trail coverage. So let me back this up just a touch. I'm going to show you 
from the side angle here. Here's Rashad Owens. He's a crosser here. What makes this play happen is Brennan Presley to the top here. Instead of just shallow crossing, he actually drives down the field, and also the safeties are deep. That helps as well. He actually drives down the field before he actually crosses, and then he climbs just a touch to keep this safety deep enough to let Owens get up underneath him. Okay, so K-State, they're in a 50 front right here. Out of that odd stack, you have to assume they've morphed into a 3-4 look, which means this is an outside linebacker, which means if he gets a pass look. Now, how do you say how does he get a pass look? Like these safeties, these defensive ends, they're reading high hat, low hat. See how this offensive lineman, he's in a pass blocking pa uh, posture. That's a high hat look. If he was in a run blocking posture, you would probably see the top of his helmet. That's considered a low hat look. So once you get a high hat look, you know it's a pass. You have to assume this guy is an outside linebacker, which means he would drop into pass coverage. That would make it disastrous for this play. So you have to account for him. What are you going to do about him if he is in pass coverage? So what does OSU do? They swing out Ollie Gordon, and that forces this outside linebacker to follow him and chase him. And then after Brennan Presley, after he drives and then climbs, that opens up the middle of the field and leaves this pocket right here wide open to get the ball to Rashad Owens right there, who all he has to do is turn up the field and get the first down about 10 yards on the play. That is just a terrific concept, well executed. Again, watch Brennan Presley drive first. He doesn't just shut. See, Rashad Owens is already crossing here, starting his cross. Brennan Presley is still square because he's going to drive a little further to create that space, still driving, and then, then he's going to come inside. Now, once he does this mesh concept here, he's going to climb a little bit further. See how he's still climbing right there? Opens up that spot after Ollie Gordon had taken that outside linebacker. Great play, Oklahoma State. Great play call. Great play designed by Casey Dunn. A couple of concepts together in one to get that first down. Now, here's the big Ollie Gordon run. This was also just a tremendously drawn-up play right here. First of all, you have the swing look here to, to, to Brennan Presley. Okay, let me back this up and start that play again. So, here's the swing look to Brennan Presley. That's going to hold this safety right here. This safety has to drive on Brennan Presley. Now, look. Actually, Alan Bowman is looking at this safety to determine what he's doing. If this safety actually drives down on this inside run, all he's got to do is pull the ball and throw it to to Brennan Presley. Here is another. This is yet another. This this you know this could be considered maybe a swing draw type type concept. But air raid, all it is is hey, you have a quarterback reading one safety player and you make the safety player wrong. So if the safety player drives down. On the run, then you just simply pass the ball to your section, second option. If your safety stays back, then you go ahead and give the ball on the run play and or, you know, maybe an underneath pass route, whatever it may be. That is air raid to the absolute bone of what air raid is. Alan Bowman reads this safety. He... The safety gets kind of is in limbo right there, so he gives the ball, and then we're going to see Ollie Gordon cut back and get big yards. Now, I want you to see this run from behind and why this actually happened. Ollie Gordon needs to take that to the house. Dad, gum it. Get, you know, break that, break that tackle, outrun those two guys, take it to the house. OSU needs seven right there, and we know that OSU is not real great in goal to go situations when they get closer to the to the end zone so hey watch this okay there is the there goes presley to take care of this outside linebacker because we don't want him to make the play as as gordon cuts this back now you're going to watch right guard pull watch right guard pull okay and what are the reason why that is so important you know as a linebacker what you're taught is to read your guard and if your guard pulls you chase him okay so watch this linebacker chase the pulling guard right here see this right there see that linebacker See how he's chasing that pulling guard? That's opening up this hole right here. He's all the way over the top of that play because he assumes this play is going to go right here as he follows that pulling guard. Now, the, the, the absolute beauty of this play, look at the right tackle. See how he's hinged right here? This is called a hinge technique. I'm going to back that up and let you watch him from the start. Okay, so what he's going to do is he's going to influence this guy to want to run this rim right here. And then once he runs the rim, all he has to do, almost like he's pass blocking, is turn his butt to the hole 
hole, and he has to hinge it. That's called a hinge right there. See how, how he steps inside to get this guy to want to go around him here? And then after he gives that look, now watch how he hinges right here. See how he sticks his, see how he just sticks his butt to the hole, and that opens up this hole right here. So after you've influenced this guard to pull, all the way over the top of it, and then after you've hinged that that outside linebacker, if you will, I think that's what they call it in their odd stack, you've opened up this hole to the backside. I know on the broadcast they say it was great vision, and it was, but Ollie Gordon, this was a planned cutback. This was a well-designed play, and one more thing right here. This safety right here is reading Ollie Gordon's eyes. Let me back this up if I can get it stopped right here. Look at Ollie Gordon. Ollie Gordon does a just tremendous job selling the fake of this. Ollie Gordon is actually looking right here. Now, look at this safety right here. He is reading Ollie Gordon's eyes. Because Ollie Gordon's eyes are right here, this safety assumes that he needs to keep driving, and this is where the play is going to go. So watch him drive right here just a touch. See how he takes that step down because he saw Ollie Gordon's eyes go here, and then Ollie Gordon, boom, he just busts back to the backside. That safety right there is absolute toast. Gordon is off to the races. He needs to break that tackle, young man. Get into the end zone. A great play. The, the drive did stall, though. Alex Hale came in for one of his five field goals. OSU takes a lead 10 to nothing. That lead didn't last a whole long time, though, as Will Howard, he took it to the house, and this was a great play for K-State. Just two plays after OSU kicked the field goal. I'm going to back this up. This may actually roll through to get to show you what happened here. This was just a situation to where OSU did not identify the personnel that was on the field for Kansas State. Oh, th this is this is an unacceptable play from the defense from the perspective of it wasn't execution, it was recognition. Now look right here. This is unbalanced. They have two tackles right here and a guard and a tight end. And how does OSU line up to that? They well, if you if you scroll this back, okay, what's brilliant about this, the way the K State set it up, okay, they have three receivers at the top, and then OSU rolled both safeties over to the wide side of the field to these three receivers. They left just one safety right here, and he's not, he should be in a cloud position because they haven't recognized it's unbalanced. So right here, K-State has four plus a quarterback. That is five to OSU's four on this side of the field, and one of those four is a safety that is 10 yards deep. That is not going to work from a numbers perspective. So whenever they pull this guard and that tackle, this tackle, all he has to do right there is blocked down on him all you have to do right there is block down on this defensive end now you're going to have two on one against this safety and actually two on two you're going to have this guard and this tackle against this linebacker and that safety is actually going to be three on two when you add will howard the ball here i'm going to show you how that works here's the two pullers the guard and the tackle now here's your two defensive players linebacker and safety so now as far as blocker and tackler you have two on two one for him, two for him, but it's three on two because you have the quarterback behind that. Three on two is always going to favor a guy like Will Howard. Safety does a great job of playing outside leverage, cuts it back in, but because K-State had the numbers, there was nobody there to for inside leverage for him, and it was to the house for Will Howard. A well-designed play, not recognized well at all by the Oklahoma State defense. That's why it went to the house. K-State brought it back to 10 to 7 with a little under 13 minutes to go in the first half. After the long Will Howard touchdown, Oklahoma State had a field goal attempt. You're seeing Cameron Epps right here. We'll get back to that here in a minute. Oklahoma State had a field goal attempt blocked, and then K-State after that, they punted. Then Oklahoma State kicked a field goal right before half. Alex Hale had five field goals on the night, and then you had the Pick six, which really turned. I mean, that was 10 points right there in just a short period of time. This was the pick six right here. That's Cameron Epps right there, young man. Take it to the house. What a great play. I'm going to back it up and show you how unique this play was. Now, watch Cameron Epps. You actually see this from the from the, the TV broadcast. This is him right here. And although he is in man-to-man -man coverage on this young man right here, usually when you're a man-to-man, -man, your eyes have to be locked in on your receiver because you have to follow them everywhere you go. If you're not watching a receiver, Receiver and you're trying to cover them one-on-one, -on -one, that makes it very difficult. The way OSU played this right here, because they didn't have a whole lot of time left in the half, although they were playing man coverage, their secondary members actually had their eyes on Will Howard. So they were getting the best of all worlds. That's what allowed Cameron Epps 
to actually intercept this pass. Now, look at Cameron Epps' eyes right here. Still on Will Howard. He's reading Will Howard right here. Once Will Howard actually turns to the right, which means to Epps' side of the field, that's when Epps' eyes go directly to his receiver. So right when he saw Epps, Epps' eyes turn. Let me back that up one more time and show you right there. Epps, that's right when Will Howard actually turned to his right and started looking to his receiver. Epps then got it, flipped his hips, got his eyes on the receiver. And the good thing about this, all he has to do is rally to the ball because there's not a whole lot of time left and let K-State throw it underneath so he's safe. But then he saw the route, and because he knew where the ball was going, he'd probably seen this route a million times on film. And because this was actually an out and up, a double move, Cameron Epps did a great job of keeping depth on this because he was trying to stay behind his receiver because there was very little time. Not a very smart move to go out up on a double move with a safety that is playing that deep. They probably didn't have you know, uh, any idea that he was going to have his eyes on Howard, though. So uh, once the, the second move happened, that's when Cameron Epps jumped the route. He knew that's right exactly when Will Howard was going to throw the ball. Now, when you look at this right here, look how he actually breaks on this ball. There is the out right there, okay? And then right as soon as the up goes, that's right there. That's what I want you to see. Right as soon as Cameron Epps saw the up, he knew exactly where that ball was going. That is film work right there. That you know, And that's also, you know, him watching the quarterback and knowing what he's doing. But more so than anything, he saw this tendency on film. He knew that as soon as that up happened, get the eyes back up on the football, find the ball because that's when it's coming out. So he found the ball at the exact moment that the receiver turned up the field. Once he did, he undercut that ball right there. The receiver never saw it. And to the house, Cameron Epps, the young man, the redshirt freshman out of St. Louis. And then here is the 53-yard field goal in the third quarter from Alex Hale. And I want to back that up and kind of talk about Alex a little bit. There's Cameron Epps to the house again. Alex Hale right there. Young man who has been on the Big 12 academic all honors list four different times. He was a Luke, Road, uh, Luke Rosa award semifinalist in 2020. And hey, he had five field goals last night. And if he keeps kicking like he has this year, he will not be a semifinalist in 2023. He will win the Lou Groza Award if he keeps kicking like this. Not going to win a whole lot of games kicking five field goals, but hey, it's sure a lot better to have them than not. So great job. Let me back that up just a little bit. Great job, Alex Hale. And OSU needed every single one of his five field goals. So after the Alex Hale 53-yard field goal, K-State drove the football down the field. And I want to show you this play. This is Trey Rucker right here. Young man who has been in trouble this last week, but it was great to see him get out on the field and show what he's capable of. He is such a big-time player right here from a safety position. Reed's run. Look how he gets down the field, the ranginess of it. Tracks down a very good back with K-State, 4K State, and tracks it down. Makes it a fourth and eight, and for some reason, Kansas State decides to go for it. The snap goes awry. Will Howard has to go sit on it. It serves them right because that was a simply terrible decision to go for it on four down. Look at the score, 23-17. to 17. A field goal makes it a 13-point game. Okay, so they don't get it on fourth down. Then OSU gets the ball back after that. They kick a field goal. After OSU kicks the field goal, K-State drives it back down. Treshawn Ward, he scores a touchdown. What I wanted to show you on this play was the quickness. Watch that jump stop right there and jumps out outside of a would-be tackler. Treshawn Ward is the young man who transferred from Florida State. And then Will Howard takes it in for the two-point conversion. The two-point conversion they had to have because they went for it earlier. And that actually made it at the time a 26-13 to 13 game or 26 to 15 game, excuse me. And there was still, you know, quite a bit of time left. That was just a really nice run from Treshawn Ward. Still quite a bit of time left, you know, an entire quarter of which to play. So K-State was squarely back in it. K-State squarely had the momentum at the end of the third quarter. Oklahoma State got the ball back after K-State scored with just 17 seconds to go. 
And the end of the third quarter, OSU then went three and out. Could just get five yards on their next possession. Then K-State got the ball. They ran four plays. And on fourth down, OSU stopped them on fourth and three again. That only took a minute 22 off the clock. So OSU got the ball back. They drove in five plays. And they got down to the Kansas State 26-yard line. Alex Hale connected on another field goal. And so Oklahoma State, they took the lead. They, they scored three more points with 12.49 to go on the clock. Oklahoma State added to their lead. Then K-State got the ball back. And this is what you're seeing right here on your screen with Will Howard. He went right down the field. And on this play right here, was able to set the Kansas State Wildcats up for their next touchdown, of which I have no idea they got that. They were down eight whenever they scored, so I'm going to watch this play. We're going to analyze this first. So first of all, let's back this up. Will Howard takes the snap. Okay, so you have a running back to his right. You have a receiver coming back on the fast float right there. So you see that this fast float right hold, right here, that holds the outside the, the safety, the outside linebacker, and this defensive end right here. It widens him out. So Will Howard just simply reads this defensive end. If this defensive end takes that fast flow, this is actually a play side. You know, usually you're reading that backside defensive end. This is actually a play side. We actually call this dash. So there, there's actually a name for it. You know, J.W. Walsh used to run this like crazy with his dad, John Walsh back at Denton Ryan. It's it's you know it's almost like an inverted veer. You know, veer you would attack that defensive end with the fullback, and then the quarterback would have the fast flow. On this play, it's inverted, meaning that the quarterback has the full flow, the running back has the fast flow, and you're reading the play side defensive end of which Will Howard is doing right here. Since that play side defensive end stretched it out on the fast flow, Will Howard just pulls the ball, gets right back up underneath that nine tech that was playing. Um, uh, the, the fast flow on that play. And you see this linebacker right here. He also chased the fast flow as well. And it was out the back door. And right there, you get a good block on Trey Rucker. And Will Howard, with good speed, is able to break that tackle and get all the way down to the five-yard line. And then the very next play, he was able to score. You see his H-back pulling back around as we analyze this play. This is a little, what I call cross buck. You're going to see a little action from your, your running back right here. And then the cross buck with the H back coming back the other way. And so for a linebacker, you know, hey, this linebacker's reading that action, this linebacker's reading that action. It creates a lot of indecision. You can see both linebackers ended up in the wrong spot. So you have a tackle and a pulling H back right there ready to block. And basically all you have left is one safety here for the Cowboys. And that is a very, very easy touchdown. Kendall Daniels did not work past that block. And then K-State scores. And then right here, for some reason, now look at the score, 29-21. They just scored. It's an eight-point game. Still plenty of time left, 8.56 left. Why in the world do you go for two here? You kick the extra point. You go down seven. That means if you score again, then you're down just seven again, and you don't have to go for two. You know, they had a play that they liked. I'm sure that was that went into it a lot. They thought this reverse pass would have probably they thought it would walk into the end zone. This is actually a two-way go for this receiver that can throw right here as he gets reverse right here. Look, he can have a two-way go here. This guy right here, this safety right here, did a fantastic job. He read the play. So whenever the the, the ball carrier saw that the safety read the play, then he went into throw mode. It was a two-way go for him. Made a good throw, but hey, this was just knocked away at the last moment. Having said that, even if you thought that play was going to work, you thought you had that in the back pocket, that was just absolutely monumentally not the right decision to go for two at that time. It just felt like it swung the balance of the game and the momentum back to OSU in some ways, and it kept K-State behind the eight ball. But, hey, 29-21, to 21, 8.56 to go, still left in the game. So there's three minutes and 33 seconds left. K-State has the ball down eight. It's third and 12. You figure they're going to go for it on fourth. They try to dump it off and get about half of the yardage back. But Nick Martin jumps the route. And that's not the end of the game because K-State still had three timeouts left. And as we saw, OSU went three and out. And then K-State went out on downs after that. And OSU did win the game. But for all intents and purposes, this was the 
the you know pretty much the final turning point. I was in the stands, and I can tell you a lot of K State fans left after this interception by Nick Martin. I want to show you what happened right here? OSU, as you can see, right here in the middle, they're in man-to-man coverage with their linebackers. They have a four-man rush, so they have a good amount of pressure on Howard. They're going to flush him a little bit. One thing that was pretty obvious about Howard is he does not like pressure. He steps away from it. Martin, you can see is in I'm not sure his knee wasn't down right there if you actually look at that okay so Martin's actually in zone you can tell because his eyes are still on Will Howard it's kind of one of those matchup zones if I back this up you know you're in zone right here squarely he's in zone you can see and then this this little crosser comes into his zone his eyes stay on the quarterback that tells you he's in a zone coverage but it's kind of a match coverage because once you get a guy in your zone you kind of play a man-to-man type coverage against him in your zone so that's what Nick Martin did and he got the best of all worlds because he kind of played that match man to man with with the receiver in his zone but kept his eyes on the quarterback which allowed him to jump this route and then he was able to make that interception to top off just a historic night for Nick Martin 16 tackles and interception he was just a absolute stud on the field all night long and so with 324 left K-State they still did have Three timeouts left, but OSU got the ball back and was looking to kill the clock. So this was it. This was last chance for the Wildcats. You see the twist up front. Will Howard, who basically all night long, any time that the folks put pressure on him, he got happy feet and he just did not look comfortable with pressure around him. You can see him being very inaccurate here. Steps up a little bit from the pressure. No accuracy whatsoever with the pressure around him. So that's something that the, the Cowboys did to him all night. They made him feel comfortable. They forced him into mistakes in passing scenarios. That sets up the big fourth down. And, and point blank, if OSU wants to be the type of defense as good as they want to become, Colin Oliver, you're seeing him right here on that rush to the top, gets his hand up, knocks it down, and that's the end of the game. Cowboys win. Colin Oliver, that's a young man that the Cowboys need to get going. He needs to reach his potential because this dude is an absolute beast you can see hey they always tell you if you can't get to the quarterback stick your hand up knock it down in the game right there but colin oliver absolute beast this young man you know he's a guy that can dominate games so great to see him in the game last night osu wins 29 to 21. so there you have it i hope you enjoyed our breakdown of the oklahoma state and k-state game a big win for osu 29 to 21 and hey if you just look at the rest of the schedule you know what's coming up for osu you have kansas and you have cincinnati you have west virginia and then ou hey man you could go into that ou game six and two it's amazing what just one game you know coming into last night it's like well, I'm not sure we have good enough players. It might only win one or two more games. Not going to be favored in maybe maybe the Cincinnati game. It's amazing how just one game and, and you know, hey, just the aggressive nature of which OSU played last night, how that can just change things on a dime. So super exciting. Big game this week against Kansas. Again, it's, it's in the middle of the afternoon on Saturday. You expect a huge crowd. Not sure if the starting quarterback there, Jalen Daniels, will be healthy or not. We'll have to monitor that. We'll have more on that. On our midweek podcast, when Chase Witwiska joins, we'll have all that information. But, hey, very good offense for Kansas, a different type team. K-State's more methodical. Kansas is going to be more of your modern wide open score a lot. It's, it's going to be a lot different. OSU's going to have to try to keep up. I would imagine, you know, OSU's going to try to slow it down a touch to, to try to play their game and get Kansas to slow down themselves. You know, Kansas wants to play that basketball on grass type football game but hey this is a very winnable game for osu then you have west virginia cincinnati so a very winnable stretch it's just too bad you gave away those two games you could really be looking at something totally special for this year hey and the thing about it is though alan bowman settling in he got the week off basically three weeks in a row to work with the number one unit that obviously paid off the week off the the oklahoma state uh, staff they went in and put some more air raid concepts back into it to get the lead did a great job with it so everything looked good i think we can put the quarterback controversy to bed alan bowman will be the quarterback for the remainder of the season barring injury or barring three or four games in a row where he just does not perform at all but he played good last night he did not do anything to hurt osu made some plays to help osu and also i think you can see 
He gave the team some continuity and something to build around. And he is absolutely a leader. Super positive young man. He's a guy that, that, that guys like to rally around. So I think we're lucky to have Alan Bowman in this stopgap year, probably getting to Zane Flores for next year. But who knows? It may be Garrett Rangel next year. It may be Gunnar Gundy. It may be somebody that we don't even know that's not on campus as of right now. That's then. This is now. There's a lot to get to. And again, you're to that three wins. And I know Coach Gundy it would be very important to him to get to that bowl game again to keep that bowl streak alive so all is up and up it was a great game last night so i hope you enjoyed this podcast i hope you enjoyed it i hope you tune into our podcast that we're going to release midweek with chase Whitwiska. i hope you make sure and go to the the o state daily o state underscore daily twitter instagram facebook and tiktok we have all the game breakdowns there we have great discussion so make sure and and join those social media platforms and join along and leave us a comment make sure to like this video share this video interact with this video that way it gets seen seen as much as possible and suggest as much you know hey this is just a brand new channel trying to get things going i do have that dodgers daily channel going on the dodgers side of things so trying to get the o state side going and so i need your help doing that so make sure and interact with this video leave a like leave a comment do all of that so hey as for now as till next time i want to thank you for tuning in and say go pokes